Hey, say Butterfield for your listen the house, the guy from Mars. Uh, I enjoyed this movie so much. It makes, it makes me so much cry, believe me. Uh, at the half of, of it, uh, I started crying and uh, it doesn't stop until the end. And I have to sit there for maybe five or six minutes. I can't leave the cinema because I was so, <laughs> so wet in my eyes. So uh, congratulations for that. And uh, the essential question of the movie is, what is the thing that you would love most on Earth? So what is for you the thing that you enjoy or love most on Earth? Um, I think the people, being able to kind of talk to people and have your friends and your family around you, that con human connection is the most important thing for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, the emo as I told you, the movie is very emotional for me. So if you see this movie, because um, you made it, so you have spent so much time on set, you know how all the special effects would be made. Is it also some kind of emotional for you? Did you also have maybe tears in your eyes, or is it just like you looking maybe on, 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 on a cake that you have uh, baking before? Um, it's always quite weird watching your own movies, because, I mean, firstly, what you see when you're making the film is only one perspective and when the film is finished and edited and uh, I mean it's, it changes a lot and it develops a lot and it evolves so you never really know what to expect and um, as well as that you're watching yourself especially because I'm in the film so much so I'm watching myself pretty much the whole thing and it's quite hard to get emotionally invested in yourself because it's just really kind of quite jarring and weird but I mean that's that's how it is whenever you watch your own movies it's just the nature of it mm. it is done so well the movie but I could imagine that there are maybe some funny moments as I said during the shooting do you remember a few moments for us um, uh, there was, uh, there was a couple moments I thought me and Brit had a kissing scene and I thought it would be funny to eat a tuna sandwich beforehand <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of funny. <laughs> she didn't find it so funny. Um, <laughs> another time, the robot in the film, the first scene we had with the robot, he actually broke his head, actually literally fell off and smashed on the floor. So we had to stop filming that day, or at least halt for quite a few hours to fix the robot, which was kind of funny. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people didn't find it funny because time is money on a film set, but you gotta see the lighter side of things. Great stories, especially the tuna sandwich, because I know how girls uh, um, yeah, react when you have maybe eaten some fish before. Uh, uh, what did you say? <laughs> because you know, this was the day of the kissing scene, and you um, eat the tuna sandwich. I, 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 I can't remember, honestly. Um, I just remember having it, and then having to eat some gum afterwards, because Brit wasn't... she didn't laugh. <laughs> I love this story, and because she's, she's so adorable, I, I enjoy her so much because hey, it's Britta Roberts, and uh, I would fall in love if I would be allowed to. So um, how was it kissing her? Because you're the lucky guy who were allowed to. Um, I mean, kissing scenes are, I mean, they're kissing scenes. They are weird, and it's kind of, you can't let it get awkward, because naturally they will get awkward. It's always awkward when you're kissing someone, and there's no kind of real reason behind it. So you just have to laugh and like laugh at it and not take it seriously. Otherwise, it starts to feel weird. So yeah, that's that's it. Mm. Is it easier for you doing a kissing scene when you know the actor as the actress before? Or is it easier when you don't know her before and don't met her before? Um, I don't know. I've never done a kissing scene with someone who I've never previously kind of talked to or who mm. I'm not kind of friends with. I haven't had that many, so I I, I don't know. Because I you know in some movies they started at the first day of shooting with some kind of love scenes, so uh, I don't know why. But I got the information that sometimes they do it, so. That would be interesting. Yeah. I will let you know when that happens to me. Did any, any other weird things maybe happen during all the special effect scenes or zero gravity scenes? Uh, um, uh, not really. I mean, the special effects stuff you don't really see. It's all, mm. There was some green screen, but not too much of it. But no incidents relating to that. And the scene in the um, uh, plane, where your two uh, fly away, mm -hmm. looks very, very real. It's this double decker, and um, it don't look like CGI. So uh, how did you shoot it? We had a real plane, um, which we were inside. I mean, 
when it's driving, when it's not flying, we're actually in the plane moving. Mm -hmm. But when it's flying, we didn't get to go in it during flight. We uh, would sit in the plane, they had the whole kind of green backdrop around it. And uh, the way they got it to kind of look like it was moving and rising with the air is they had a camera on the crane and they would move the camera about whilst keeping the plane still. And it gave the illusion that the plane was kind of moving and rising up and it looks great. Okay, it, it works really well. The wheels guy in the background, but just from another perspective. So that it looks like you are over the clouds, but you are still um, maybe a little bit above the ground and you are just um, moving the camera like... Um no, 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 it's great. Uh, the Everything, all the background is mm -hmm. green, is CGI, okay. the green screen. But the movement of the plane is, okay. is made through, the, through the, the crane. It's really well done, really well done. Great scene. And um, how far would you go for the girl or for the person you love? Because in this, this uh, movie um, you um, yeah, go about 140 million kilometers far away to uh, meet her. So how far would you go for, for your love? Um, maybe a bus ride or two yeah <laughs> I don't know I don't know okay and um, if you um, would be in um, Gardner's position so if you have to spend maybe 16 years of your life on Mars mm -hmm. what would you think what would you do the whole day maybe also build a wall I would end up getting really good at really random stuff like I would end up holding the world record for the most pointless things in the world like the world record for how many consecutive ping pong shots you could get into a cup, or uh, the world record for clapping as fast as you can. I'm already pretty good at that. But if I lived on Mars, I imagine I'd have a lot more time on my hands. I'd also read loads of books. The internet's probably not that great, so yeah, I don't know. But how did you manage it? Because uh, in my television station, and it's based in Germany, we have so slow internet, and we have such kind of uh, wires that are going out of our computers, and this is Mars, and you are chatting 140 million kilometers far away. So, okay, I want to have this internet provider that he has. Yeah, well, I mean, they have their own Mars satellite, which is pretty useful, which lets them bounce back and forth. But you're right, it's, uh, it's not very quick. That's for sure. But in the movie it's working, and it's working very well. And you seem a little bit, uh, some kind of be in the sci-fi genre, because you'd made Endless Game, very great movie that I also enjoy. Then you made uh, Mrs. Peregrine's uh, Peculiar Children, um, is the uh, original title, and you made now um, A Space Between Us. So how much are you personally into sci-fi? And did you maybe have some sci-fi movies that you really love, or books that you um, have read and uh, really enjoy? Um, I do like the genre. I think I, I do like science fiction films. Um, my favorite, well, my favorite film of all time is The Matrix, which is one of, if not the best science fiction film. So obviously, it's uh, debatable, but in my opinion, yeah, I love that movie. Um, and I like the fact that sci-fi sci often the themes and the ideas, uh, and the story revolves around things that aren't necessarily impossible or that far away from where we currently are. I think that's a really cool concept. Okay, last question. Did you have maybe another new movie that you are maybe shown, um, <coughs> uh, shooting right now? Or? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not working right now, but before Christmas I, uh, I was working on a British film, independent movie called Journey's End, mm. based on the play. It's a World War I drama with uh, an amazing group, with an amazing cast and uh, and director and, uh, and DOP, we, uh, yeah, we were really lucky and it's really exciting. It's going to be a really powerful movie, I think. Great. I'm excited to see it. Thank, Thank you. you so much for this movie. It's Thank very, you. very well done. Thanks.